that's my presentation. Thank you. Michael for their interesting talk and we're now having a kind of distinct shift from policy over to data and I'll hand you over to Mark Birkin who is Professor of Spatial Analysis and Policy um, here at Leeds and also Director of Leeds Institute for Data Analytics and the Consumer Data Research Centre. Thank you Professor Wall and uh, Michelle just uh, loads, loads me up and generally sorts me out. Um, it's a quick activity for you then. So uh, if you've got a um, uh, gentlemen have a volume on your person, no uh, ladies purse or whatever else you uh, use to store these things in. Um, and if you'd like to fish out a card for me. That's it. Any card, any card will do. If I take any more currency. <laughs> very improvised, but uh, just to make sure you're paying attention. So I've got a con of my cards uh, uh, recently, I threw about 20 away. <laughs> but I've still got, uh, so I've got a bank card. Anybody got a bank card in their hand? Yeah, uh, I've got a credit card. Uh, uh, oh, what's in for the next card? Your next card, or similar, still not a card back. Uh, oh, European health insurance cards. Uh, uh, travel insurance cards are uh, essential for every uh, modern academic, I'm sure. <coughs> I've got my um, university uh, union membership for the these days. You'd be putting these away if you've got uh, uh, duplicates, I guess. Uh, that, I guess, is my uh, uh, university library card. Uh, oh, well, that's in really car. That's, um, uh, again, travel thing, Texas prevention I've got there. Um, I've got my uh, university coffee loyalty card. Uh, Starbucks card in your hand, or um, other brands are also uh, available. Um, or a restaurant, or something like that. Um, okay, so that's what I've got in my... Uh, well, I've got a card for the gym, I promise, but that's in my... Uh, uh, that's in my sports bag. Uh, anybody got any, anything else? Uh, yes, sir? Uh, sorry? Uh, the cards. Oh, sorry? Uh, the cards. I don't have cards. Oh, I have drive cards. That's still a word, actually. Yeah, Rail card. Rail card. Frequent flyers. Frequent flyers. A business card. Right. Is, it, is it digital? <laughs> no, okay, I was right. It's full of the briefs, but it's not like that. Okay, so um, you know, a, a wide variety of uh, <laughs> things there. We've had um, yeah, uh, a business card and one or two other things, my, uh, uh, my vaccination card and what have Maybe not uh, digitally enabled, but most of these things, uh, I'm guessing, probably are. Um, and so, um, you know, it's, it's not a, a very uh, acute observation in some ways. Actually, Um, you know, data information is being collected about us all, um, all the time, through these means and others. I mean, we haven't even talked about mobile phones and, and, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, the issue that really concerns me as, uh, as, as Director of the Consumer Data Research Centre, and our essential uh, mission, I think, is, is to think about, you know, there's a lot of intelligence, or, well, we've got data, but potentially there's intelligence, knowledge, um, to be gleaned from these, um, you know, from these various sources of data, which are really very interesting to us, particularly as, 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 as the social scientists, um, uh, geographers, uh, business schools, political scientists, a wide variety of people. Um, but you know, the other issue is that there's a lot of, well, there's a lot of this data out there, 
but as academics we don't really have access to it. Um, and what the Consumer Data Research Centre is really all about is trying to build a bridge between uh, the academic domain and interest in these kind of questions about, um, well I'll talk about some of them more a little bit, but you know, these kind of social science questions and the sources of data that are increasingly being held by uh, commercial organisations or by our employers or by, uh, in the case of Oyster Club, by, by, by travel authorities, energy suppliers and so on and so forth. Um, and so with that context, um, um, uh, Michelle's asked me to try and um, uh, get back to, to time. It's a little bit late, so get us back to 11 o'clock. So I'll, I'll whip through my slides. Uh, oh, gosh, you can get me in. Um, I'll whip, whip through the slides reasonably quickly with that, with that context. So um, I've just kind of um, outlined for you the, 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 the broad aspiration of the Consumer Data Research Centre. So the CDRC is part of uh, a network that was established by uh, the ESRC, the Economic and Social Research Council, uh, a couple of years ago now, back end of 2013, with quite a large uh, chunk of funding by um, ESRC standards. Its annual budget is only a couple of hundred million, I think. So to put, um, I think they actually put 40 something million into uh, the, uh, the ESRC big data network at that, uh, at that time. Um, and there are some more um, uh, activities to follow. You know, you know, why do they do that? You know, because of these kind of the opportunities and potential importance for research that, uh, uh, that I was just talking about. Um, and there's a broader agenda about the importance of big data in, um, in the economy and lots of jobs being created in data analytics and uh, data science and so forth. And so there's a slightly broader kind of uh, uh, agenda here for the universities, but I won't go into uh, any more detail on that today, I don't think. So, the um, Consumer Data Research Centre, here we are down in the uh, bottom uh, left hand corner as you look at it, is part of this ESRC big data network. Uh, it also includes the Administrative Data Research Network, uh, which I think Jamie is going to say a little bit about when he uh, uh, comes on after me. Uh, a number of you will be familiar with the UK Data Service, which is already established as a a centralised provider of kind of uh, a government data sets and other data that's generated through, uh, through academic studies. Uh, we have an urban big data centre which is particularly concerned with uh, the you know, kind of smart city type data and, and information that's been generated from uh, you know, sensors and, and other kinds of external sources. Um, and uh, a business and local government data research centre with some similar interest. So we're part of a bigger um, uh, nationwide activity that some of you will be familiar with other, other parts of. Uh, so, uh, as I guess I've kind of uh, uh, hinted out there already, so what are we doing? We're trying to provide a national service which is you know, building this, 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 this bridge as I've described it, um, but also trying to um, you know, the academic community to some of these external data sets. And I, I guess then you know, the other part of this is you know, because we're not used to using you know, these sorts of data sources, you know, there's also an element of novelty there. So you know, there's genuine research to be done to actually start to you know, understand you know, what I mean, there are issues about you know, kind of quality and coverage and all that in, the, in these data sets. But you know, essentially, you know, how can we start to to leverage the value from these, some of these sources that are familiar to us um, in, in, the work that, um, in the work that we do. Um, and so very quickly, this is another example that um, uh, I like to use, and, and um, with a, apologies to all those die-hard um, uh, census fans in the, uh, in, in, in the room, but I, I, I only came across this a few months ago, um, you know, the, the kind of the census uh, uh, motto, aphorism, you know, who we are, how we live, and what we do. Um, and I think this, this kind of expresses the, the uh, consumer data research agenda quite nicely in, in, in some ways, because, you know, I mean, who we are, well, okay, you know, who we were in, on March the 27th, uh, 2011, is what we're capturing in the, in the census. You know, so, well, you know, how we live, well, uh, you know, it captures some 
aspects of, uh, of our demographic characteristics and uh, maybe our mobility patterns in terms of the journey to work elements, the migration elements, um, you know, it, it doesn't pick up um, any of our uh, major activities, it doesn't uh, account for mobility patterns at uh, weekends or in the summer months away from the census. Uh, and in terms of what we do, as we've, uh, you know, we've heard of this already, it doesn't capture uh, our consumption behaviour, the kinds of things we eat, uh, whether we like going to uh, the cinema, um, uh, our, you know, our political voting behaviour, you know, all sorts of things are not actually reflected in, these, in the census and other kinds of conventional sources, uh, government surveys and so forth, that academics would typically use in, in their research. And a lot of this is richly embedded in uh, these new forms of data source, some of which are being captured through um, uh, uh, through the cards that we've talked about and, and various other means. Okay, so what we're interested in, 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 in trying to do through the Consumer Data Research Centre is to build these uh, build these bridges and particularly to work with uh, with data partners to try and bring um, uh, some more uh, um, some data into in, into uh, the academic domain and, and to become accessible for these. Uh, for various kinds of social science research studies. Uh, and so we've got some organisations here that we're starting to uh, bring on board, and some of them are quite uh, uh, large organisations that you'd be familiar with, like uh, uh, ASTA and EasyJet and Centrica and so forth, and others that may be a little bit more, um, a little bit more niche in, uh, in, in various regards. Um, and that's a network that we're keen to build up and to, um, you know, to increase the, 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 uh, the diversity of that base of partners, but uh, uh, you know, we're becoming established and, and, and making some progress there with, with some um, uh, well-known organisations. And I should also um, uh, emphasise here uh, on the left-hand side, so the, the Consumer Data Research Centre itself, uh, it's, it's funded as two different projects but within one centre, uh, and one ourselves at the University of Leeds, uh, and the other a collaboration between uh, UCL and uh, the Universities of Liverpool and, and, and Oxford. So there are a variety of, uh, of organisations involved in this programme. Uh, I'll say something uh, very briefly, given the time, about uh, two of the areas where we have been uh, interested in, in trying to explore the potential value of uh, these new data sources uh, uh, to um, uh, uh, social science. And also we refer to these as uh, driver projects within the... Uh, within the Leeds part particularly of the CDRC. Uh, one of them is generally about mobility behaviour, so I'll, I'll make the point that um, yes, we can get certain kinds of uh, intelligence about mobility from things like the census. One of the things that's very exciting about new sorts of data is it gives a very dynamic uh, picture of, um, of, of, of movement patterns, you know, and, and people are starting now to talk about new kind of real-time um, uh, research and, and interventions and, and, and problem solving. Um, I think it's a very nicely encapsulated. This is you, Sabio. This slide. I just saw you, Sabio, come in the room. Is there? Where's you, Sabio? Oh, yeah. Thanks for this, you, Sabio. <laughs> Fix this from the um, uh, shared drive uh, yesterday night. So this is a project um, uh, with the uh, with a train operating conductor. They like uh, the uh, almost uh, dynamic real time. Are they trains or uh, the trains or buses in the? Uh, they're trying to uh, uh, move it around the, uh, uh, the bottom of the, uh, of the slide. I should have to do that one uh, later on, I think. But uh, you know, just in brief, so this is a project about understanding, you know, yes, we can, you know, we can start to capture these kind of dynamic movement patterns. You know, we can use sensors, we can use ticketing information, like Jeremy's Oyster card. Um, you know, we can, we can match that up with conventional sources, like origin destination flows. Um, from uh, the census or perhaps from uh, a, a travel surveys of various kinds. So you know, there are various sorts of pieces of information that can play into this. Um, but you know, for example, one of the things that the train operating companies are, are, are really interested in is yes, they may have all this information uh, about the tickets and, you know, and, and who's going where, but do they know where people ultimately come from? You know, what's, their, what's their place of residence? Do they know the final uh, destination? What's the purpose of this trip? You know, how would it therefore be affected by uh, a change in price on this route or an alternative mode of transport, and so on and so forth. So there are lots of challenges to do with um, understanding what's going on here, 
Um, you know, to do with potential policy impacts, um, you know, the, the behavioural underpinnings of all this, um, you know, and, and all kinds of interesting challenges and questions to, uh, to address. Um, and here's another one, um, sort of Robin talking to uh, but on a, on a similar theme, and so we can see here, um, you know, the source of, of data in the, in the centre of the bottom there, you know, start to generate some, again, real-time travel information from mobile telephone apps. You know, how does that affect people's behaviour? Can we start to feed back various information or other messages that can affect um, that system in, in, in real time? And that's a project that we're uh, just about to start with, uh, with Innovate UK, actually. The second area that we are um, interested in is in ethical and sustainable consumption. Um, and this is really asking questions uh, about uh, people's changing behavioural patterns and attitudes in relation to the environment. Uh, and so, for example, the, the, the particular illustration which is shown here is, a, is about um, different kinds of supermarket products. Uh, we've got a range of different kinds of uh, milk pairs. You're interested in milk and eggs in the moment, of the, at the moment in this project, uh, and trying to understand um, the, um, as I say, it's about people's behaviour in relation to the environment. We're interested in things like organic milk, and things like free range eggs. You know, in particular, what is it that makes uh, uh, free range eggs relatively popular, uh, and organic milk much less so? Um, you know, is it about, uh, about pricing, is it about brand, is it about other, other kinds of factors? Um, and you know, the really big issue here, or one of the really big issue, issues here, um, is it on there? No, it, you know, it, it's, you know, what's the relationship between people's stated attitudes towards the environment? I'm very concerned about it. I think, uh, um, you know, they have big problems over the next 10, 20 years or what have you. And people's actual behaviour, does that really convert into uh, the things that they buy at the supermarkets or uh, their choice of travel options um, and so on and so forth. And yeah, I think there's a lot of research indicating that there's a big disjoint between those two things. You can start to understand some of that better from more uh, data and evidence-based approaches. Uh, okay, and so alongside... Uh, those, uh, those are the two driver projects. We're also very interested in uh, the core of the agenda today. So, you know, what about health, healthy behaviours, healthy lifestyles, uh, very, very, um, uh, very, very broadly specified. Uh, so, again, I mean, here's just uh, uh, an illustration, and this is actually based on uh, a linkage between, again, a fairly conventional source of data about health and obesity, uh, a cohort study with some uh, geodemographic census-based information and starting to give us a clue, uh, some hints that there might be some you know, strong spatial patterns uh, in terms of, um, you know, in, in relation to where we find uh, obesity uh, and other related health and, and behavioural conditions. Yeah, so one of the questions, of course, that we want to um, ask and that's touched on in this, in this network is, you know, what other kinds of data source can we bring into play? And we've heard already, for example, in uh, Pinky's presentation, and I've talked about you know, kind of consumer data and, um, you know, retail data and, and that kind of thing. Lots of the things, you know, we've, we've had the, um, uh, the step jockey card has been available. I hope you all picked one up. At, um, uh, at registration today, and so there are people there uh, you know, encouraging us to change our lifestyles, and they'll be uh, collecting information, I'm sure, about what kinds of people uh, are, are, are taking this up and uh, exercising more regularly in their, in their workplace. I don't think we've seen this, but this was a story that was on the um, uh, BBC News website yesterday uh, about fit walking dollars. So the idea of trying to um, convert. Uh, healthy lifestyle activity and everyday walking into some kind of currency and I'm not sure I fully grasp the, uh, uh, the business model for this but it's alright I think we can uh, watch what the Japanese do and then, uh, and then copy them uh, later but uh, yeah so the idea is that somehow you can generate credits by um, uh, walking instead of uh, taking your car or some other kind of, of, of transport and uh, well I guess ultimately to convert that somehow into uh, goods or services or 
three cups of coffee or something. Um, there's, um, okay, and so, you know, also, you know, various kinds of um, uh, apps have been developed. Also, there's another source of information uh, about uh, people's uh, behaviours, dietary patterns, and, uh, and lifestyles. Uh, so this one, uh, My Meal Mate, is available in uh, all good app stores in time of Christmas, I think. Um, others may be available, but I'm sure this is uh, um, uh, the, the market leader. Um, so there's another, um, uh, a, another form of, uh, of, of new data uh, emerging there. So just to, just to try and bring that to a, to a conclusion, and uh, actually don't read the words on this uh, slide too closely, but maybe just look at the, uh, uh, the arrows at the top. Um, what a lot of people um, ask me, and we, we, you know, we've spent a while kind of establishing the foundations for the CDRC. Um, we now have a very shiny website. Please go along and visit it and see what kinds of things uh, we're up to. But people, people ask me and ask us a lot, you know, what, what, what kinds of data have you got? You know, and the answer to that is, well, you know, we've got a few things, and I've talked a little bit about uh, some of the organisations that are providing us with with data and what have you. But the, the point I really want to make, especially to an audience like this, is you know, actually the problem's a bit more complicated than that. Um, so you know we've got we, you know we've got a framework here, we've got a mission where we think you know there's a lot of stuff out there. It's potentially a great value in tackling a problem like uh, obesity. But what we've really got to do now is to start engaging in more sophisticated conversations about what you know actually what are the kinds of problems that we can address, you know, and, and what, sorts of, what sorts of data and evidence are available that we didn't have before. And again, I might be thinking about touch on this in, um, in a lot of relevant ways in, in, in their presentation. But, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, the obesity, this obesity network is really important to us as, as a CDRC, I think, is because it provides us a, as a means to engage with a community of uh, of, of, of policy users, of academics with uh, special interests and, and, and expertise in this kind of healthy lifestyle area. And I think, you know, if we get this right in our conversations over the next year, it puts in a much stronger position then to go back to some of these organisations that, that own data. And the first thing they would say to me, I mean, I would say, well, yeah, how about sticking some of your data into, the, you know, into this big box we call the CERC? What, what do you want to do with it? You know, what value has it got? Why should I be interested in that? Uh, so, you know, from, from my point of view, this obesity research network is very much about you know, trying to develop those arguments that allow us to engage with external organisations as well as engaging together as an academic community, building a network of people who say, OK, yes, I can understand how I can use that data to solve um, you know, important challenges that I found difficult in the past or in a better way or to start to do uh, new kinds of things. Um, so, you know, hopefully some of that's expressed in our, in our major objectives, uh, using new big data sources to, to, to build uh, research collaborations and, and, and networks to share that, share that knowledge um, you know, and to, to, to try and build new research around that. One thing I did want to say very, very quickly is a final point, and I haven't quite uh, managed to do the catching up my points. Um, this, this, this point here is to generate a proof of concept research model using uh, these data, and this is something that we'll be talking more uh, later on today for those of you that are staying into the afternoon session. I think you're trying to engage the, the rest of you with and, and to, to push some more information about later in the, in the process as, as, the network, as the network develops. Um, you know, what we've chosen to do here, and I think we want to use this as a little bit of a demonstration, a framework for, for, for hanging some, some bigger ideas around, uh, but we did pull out particularly this idea of, 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 of trying to concentrate on Leeds and its, uh, and its student population as, as kind of something a little bit manageable that we could take forward in uh, a one-year network with relatively limited funding, um, so something that was quite sort of bounded and, and, and contained. But also where we might think you know, we've got a lot of access to local data sources with partners in and around the university um, and to try and think how we might uh, embed some of these ideas within that. So I think that's something that we might talk about later and that we'd be particularly keen to hear some, some ideas around and, and, and to start to frame um, some of these, uh, uh, these, these discussions and research agendas. So I think I'll... Uh,
leave it there and await questions in the panel with the other speakers. Thank you.